The media often finds drama in couples' relationships intriguing, especially when it involves infidelity. With so many of these situations not ending well, we have come to understand the extreme consequences they can lead to, including murder. A stark example of this is the murder of Robert Kissel in Hong Kong. Kissel, a successful bank investor, was sedated and then bludgeoned to death by his wife. At the time, this case sparked a great deal of controversy. Interestingly, this case caught the attention of Candice Moore, the founder of Sweet and Sour Productions, who created the play Distressed Asset, inspired by the Kissel case. According to Moore, Hong Kong is like a gold mine of dramatic and gruesome murders. You may know a few, such as the Hello Kitty murder, the Jars killer, and the one we're focusing on today often referred to as the milkshake murder. Now, let's delve into the milkshake murder. Nancy and Robert Kissel's story began in the 1980s. They dated, and then married in 1989. Nancy has said she worked three jobs to support Robert while he pursued his master's degree in finance, but the details of this are still unclear. Robert graduated in 1991 and started working at Lazard, a top finance advisory firm in New York. After five years, he joined the Sachs Group and moved to their Hong Kong office in 1997. In 2000, he became a managing director at Merrill Lynch, earning about $3 million a year. However, Robert's life wasn't without problems. Nancy claimed he started using cocaine in graduate school in New York. In Hong Kong, his addiction worsened and he began mixing drugs with alcohol. Nancy said this led to him becoming abusive, even to the point of sexually assaulting her. Things were even more complicated. To her friends, Nancy seemed like a responsible, ideal mother, but at home, she felt completely controlled by Robert. Once, when she resisted taking medicine to hasten childbirth so as not to disrupt Robert's business trip, he tried to punch her but ended up injuring his own fingers. Nancy endured this difficult life, thinking it was typical for wives in high-profile families. Her chance to leave came in 2003, when the severe acute respiratory syndrome outbreak led many American expats to flee Hong Kong. Nancy was able to take their three children to the family vacation home in Vermont. As the epidemic worsened in Hong Kong, Nancy and her children extended their stay in Vermont. This break from Robert was beneficial for Nancy. During this indefinite time, the Kissels decided to install a home theater in their vacation house, which is where the situation began to get more complex. The installer, Michael Del Prior, quickly became friends with Nancy as he worked on the house. Feeling lonely, Nancy found in Michael a dependable companion who listened to her problems without judgment. He was fun and understanding, a stark contrast to her husband in Hong Kong. This friendship eventually turned into a romantic affair. According to Nancy's testimony, she and Michael were intimate at least three times at the vacation home. Nancy even gave him a $5,000 watch and Michael took her to get tattoos of her children's names. Meanwhile, Robert's controlling nature persisted, even with Nancy in Vermont. He hired a private investigator to spy on her, driven by a strange suspicion. Robert thought his scotch whiskey tasted odd and made him feel woozy, leading him to believe Nancy was up to something sinister, possibly trying to poison him. However, the investigator later reported that Robert regretted accusing Nancy in this way. Despite her affair, Nancy never considered divorcing Robert and only sought temporary solace with Michael. Robert remained suspicious even after she returned to Hong Kong. 
He installed software on her computer so that all her emails were copied to him. Robert discovered her infidelity and threatened to divorce her and take custody of their three children. Their relationship deteriorated with frequent arguments and episodes of Robert abusing Nancy sexually in his fits of anger. Pushed to her limits, Nancy contemplated in taking her own life, but ultimately decided on a different course. In November 2003, a family friend, Andrew Tansler, visited the Kissel's apartment in Parkview with his seven-year-old daughter for a playdate. While Tansler chatted with Robert and the children played, Nancy was busy in the kitchen. The visit seemed normal until Tansler asked for water before leaving. Strangely, Nancy offered milkshakes for Tansler and Robert, prepared by the girls. Tansler noted the milkshake's red color and strawberry banana flavor. After drinking it, he left. Soon after reaching home, Tansler felt weak and drowsy, falling into a deep sleep. His wife couldn't wake him, and when he finally did awake, he was disoriented and unusually hungry. The next day, Tansler remembered little of the events after leaving the Kissels. Meanwhile, back at the Kissel apartment, after the children went to their room, Nancy and Robert retired to theirs. Robert, too, fell into a deep sleep. Nancy tested if he was truly unconscious, and finding him unresponsive, carried out her plan. With an eight-pound figurine, she struck Robert on the head five times, channeling her anger and resentment into each blow. After the horrific act of killing her husband, Nancy used her strength to pull his body onto the floor. The next day, she wrapped his body in a rug and slept in the same room with it for about three days. On November 5th, she asked the building's maintenance staff to move the rug to the storage room. Curiosity led the staff to discover Robert Kissel's body inside the rug. Nancy was arrested five days later. She didn't resist arrest and seemed to have amnesia, claiming she couldn't remember killing her husband. She remembered driving her car after the murder, but had no recollection of buying the rug to conceal the body. She acted as if the entire event were a surreal, unbelievable dream. Investigations revealed that Nancy had accumulated various sedatives. While in Hong Kong, she had consulted several doctors and obtained drugs like Rohypnol, Dextrocopoxaphene, Loravan, and Stilnox, all capable of inducing sleep. She possessed at least 30 tablets of the first two. It was unclear whether these were intended for her own use or for someone else. Nancy's trial lasted about 65 days, or just over two months, concluding in September 2005. The jury, after deliberating for only eight hours, found her guilty of manslaughter. She was sentenced to life imprisonment. Prosecutors also suggested another motive for the murder. They speculated that Nancy killed Robert to inherit approximately $18 million from his life insurance. They believed that with this money, she planned to return to Vermont, reunite with her lover, and live comfortably. This was further supported by testimonies from Robert's friends, who said that Robert often told them about how his wife was a spendthrift and a bad mother. He had expressed concerns to friends and colleagues about her violent rages and lack of attention towards their children, and how she prioritized her affair with Michael over the well-being of their children. Nancy's defense team filed an appeal. After all, Nancy had spoken of enduring considerable torment in her marriage to Robert. The appeal was scheduled to be heard on Monday, April 14, 2008. However, Nancy lost this appeal on October 6 of the same year. Reportedly holding back tears and limping due to alleged abuse by prison guards, she left the court visibly upset. Her defense team expressed disappointment, feeling the court hadn't given them a fair hearing. Even Nancy's mother held on to the belief that her daughter was not entirely guilty and had faith in Nancy's strong spirit to prevail eventually. 
Nancy's mother's faith wasn't misplaced though. Nancy and her team sought another appeal, this time to the court of final appeal after being barred from taking the case to a higher court. They hoped this court would consider their appeal more thoroughly than the original court, which they believed was biased. In a twist of fate, the Court of Final Appeal, led by Hong Kong Chief Justice Andrew Lee, decided to focus on the defense's arguments. The court found issues with the use of evidence, hearsay, and potential prosecutorial bias. Consequently, the five judges ordered a retrial, overturning the initial verdict and granting Nancy bail, which she did not take. But Nancy was re-indicted on a single count of murder for the same crime after a reinvestigation in early March 2010. The authorities saw that the murder was not an impulsive act, but a calculated one, leaving little room for doubt about her intentions. Nancy's defense team emphasized that Nancy had endured verbal, physical, and sexual abuse in her marriage with Robert. Gerard McCoy, her lawyer, also highlighted that, despite appearances, the Kissels had long been a dysfunctional family. He refuted the hearsay evidence, suggesting Nancy had previously attempted to murder her husband. The retrial began in January 2011, with Nancy pleading guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter. She claimed she wasn't in her right mind and was provoked at the time of the incident. She also acknowledged her extramarital affair. The case, involving over 50 prosecutors, went on for 10 weeks, with intense debate between the prosecution and defense. In late March of the same year, Nancy was found guilty again and sentenced to life imprisonment, the same as in 2005. Her defense lawyers were outraged, arguing that the court failed to consider Nancy's potential mental illness. By late April, the Court of Final Appeal ended any further appeals from the defense. They dismissed the defense's claims that the retrial was unfair and ignored the possibility of Nancy's mental illness. Nancy's sentence, motive, and actions were firmly established, closing the case on any further appeals. Nancy's mother was understandably shocked by the verdict, but perhaps Nancy herself was the most affected. Rumors circulated that during the trials, she broke down, screaming that she was seeing her deceased husband. The judges, possibly recognizing her distress, chose not to make a closing statement. Judge Andrew McRae, as he led Nancy away, told her he had nothing to add that would alleviate her suffering. Today, Nancy Kissel is still serving her sentence at the Thai Lam Center for Women. The Kissel's three children are currently in the care of their aunt, Haley, in the United States. Her case, which garnered both local and international attention, has inspired multiple media adaptations. Apart from Candace Moore's play, there's a TV film titled The Two Mr. Kissels and a novel called Never Enough. These adaptations have sparked further interest in the case. The Nancy Kissel case has inspired various media interpretations, each attempting to dissect the layers of this complicated story. The events leading up to the murder prompt wider discussions about the psychological effects of troubled relationships and the extreme actions that desperation could lead to. What are your thoughts on Nancy's claims of abuse and their psychological impact on her actions? share your views in the comments. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.